Hey there, Mr. Weaver here. This is Module 6, Lesson 5, Graphing Inequalities in Two Variables. After this lesson, you need to be able to graph the solutions of linear inequalities in two variables. Let's learn graphing linear equalities in two variables. The graph of a linear inequality represents the set of all points that are solutions of the inequality. When we had one variable, that was represented on a number line. The arrow, if you remember, was where all the solutions were located. Anything in the arrow was a solution. Anything outside the arrow was not a solution. For this, the edge of the graph is going to be the boundary. So similar to the circle, this time it's going to be a line. Depending on the inequality, the boundary will or will not be included in the solution set, similar to the open circle versus a closed circle. The boundary divides the coordinate plane into regions called half planes. When the boundary is included, the set of the linear inequality is a closed half plane. When it is not included, it's called an open half plane. Our key concept here is graphing linear inequalities. So first step, we're going to graph the boundary. It's going to be a line, just like we learned about in modules 4 and 5. We're going to graph a line and use a solid boundary for that line when the inequality is greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. It has the line under it. We're going to use a dashed boundary when an inequality contains just greater than or less than, similar to the open circle. Then, once we've graphed our line as our boundary, we're going to use a test point to determine which side, which half plane we should shade, and then we're going to shade the point that contains the solution. So if the point we test is true, we'll shade that side. If the point we test is not true, we'll shade the other side. Shading here is similar to drawing the arrows. Example 1. Graph an inequality with an open half plane. So graph 3x minus 2y is less than 8. Step 1, graph the boundary. So I'm going to change this into slope-intercept form, subtracting 3x from both sides, then dividing both sides by negative 2. I end up with y is greater than 3 over 2x minus 4. Remember, we flip the inequality sign when we divide by a negative, so it is switched. This is the line that we're going to graph as our boundary. So here I have it graphed. I just used Desmos to help me out graphing it. But this is what it would look like. Then, my next step, I need to use a test point. For most of these problems, I'm just going to pick 0, 0 as a test point. If 0, 0 happens to be on the boundary line, then I'm going to use another point such as 1, 1 or 0, 1, because most of the time one of those will be free to use. So when we choose our test point, so 0, 0 here, we're just going to plug those in for x and y. That just means plugging in the value for x and y. Here they're both 0. So we can see that test point right there. Plugging in 0, we end up with 0 is less than 8. Then we need to think, is that true or is that not true? That is true. 0 is less than 8, which means that point 0, 0 is included in the solution. So we need to shade where that point is located. We're going to color in all of the area in that half plane, the side that has our solution. So after you shade, that's our last step. This is what our graph looks like of our solution. Not quite the same as graphing it on a number line, but this is what the answers will look like in an inequality with two variables. It's going to be a line shaded on one side. And everything on that shaded side, all these points over here, anything over here, whether it's on a grid or not, these are all solutions. If it's not in the shaded area, it is not a solution. Example 2. Graph an inequality with a closed half plane. So graph 3x plus 4y is less than or equal to 0. We're going to follow the same steps as before. So I'm going to turn this into slope-intercept form by subtracting 3x from both sides and then dividing both sides by 4. I do not need to flip the inequality sign. Now, graphing it, I would have negative 3 fourths x. Again, we can just use Desmos to help us see what it looks like. I'm going to choose a test point. This time, 0, 0 is on the line. I don't want to use it. I'm going to choose 1, 1, since those are also easy numbers to multiply by. 
but I could choose anything else anywhere on the graph. So plugging in one for each, I'd end up with three plus four, which is seven. Seven is not less than or equal to zero, which makes this false. We'd end up with seven is less than or equal to zero. Not true, that's false. Which means because this point is false, we have to shade on the opposite side. So we're gonna color in the opposite side where the point is not located. And again, we are complete. This is what our answer looks like. Check your understanding. Graph the inequalities on the coordinate planes provided. You may use Desmos to help you decide. When you're using Desmos though, please change these to equal so you can graph the line, then use a test point to practice deciding which side to shade. Pause the video now and complete the check. Check your answers. For A, your graph should look like this. For B, your graph should look like this. Now that we understand what the graphs mean by when we graph our line, what the type of line we get and where to shade, we really can just use Desmos. So when I graph, I would graph my line, I just typed it in. Notice when I type in my inequality symbol, it automatically shades for us and it gives us the type of line we need. So pay close attention. We can see here that we have a dashed line. So make sure you would graph a dashed line and then shading below it or to the left. So you can use Desmos to also double check to make sure you are graphing things correctly. Example three, applying graphing inequalities in two variables. Our real context here is refreshments. Dominique can spend up to $20 to provide the dance squad with drinks after their practice. A bottle of water costs 80 cents and a sports drink costs $1.25. How many bottles of water and sports drinks can Dominique buy for the dance squad? So first, we're gonna need to write an inequality. If we can write the inequality, then we can use Desmos to see what our boundary should look like and we can see the possible combinations that she could buy. First, it's 80 cents for the number of water bottles. So if we have X be water, it's 0.8 or 0 0.80 times X. Plus, we have Y for the sports drink, so it would be $1.25 times Y. And her budget is $20, so she has to spend less than that, or she could spend exactly equal to 20. Now, we wanna solve it to see where our solutions should be. So, we're gonna rearrange it into slope-intercept form, by subtracting 0.8 from both sides and then dividing by 1.25. This equation now, not super nice to just graph by hand, so we can use Desmos to help us. Or we can create a table of values to help plot some points. Because Dominique can't buy negative drinks or spend negative money, really, we're not gonna use negative values here, which is nice. So if she buys zero X's, so zero waters, how many sports drinks could she buy? She could buy 16. So we can plot that point. If she bought 10 waters, she could buy 9.6 drinks, 15 waters, 6.4 sports drinks, 25 waters, zero sports drinks. If we plot the two that are actually reasonable, which are our intercepts, now we can plot that line. Let's use a test point like we did before to figure out where to shade. So zero, zero, not on the line this time. If she buys zero of each, would she be able to spend less than $20? Yes, definitely. So zero, zero is part of the solution, meaning we're gonna shade where zero, zero would be, which is under the line. Now, what does this help us figure out in a context? The shaded area is where all the solutions are. So there are many solutions there's many places we could put in the shaded area, but you can't buy fractions of water bottles or parts of sports drinks. So your solutions are only gonna be those coordinates that are whole numbers within the shaded area. So one possible solution would be 10 waters and eight sports drinks. If we go back and look, we could have 10 waters, eight sports drinks. That coordinate fits in that shaded area. We could have five waters and 12 sports drinks. That fits in the shaded area. 
We could have 15 waters and four sports drinks. We could have five and four or five and eight. Anything that fits perfectly in here, we could buy. There might be some others that are between, but these are ones that are obvious from this picture. Check your understanding. The graph of y equals 3x minus 4 is shown. Consider the solutions of y is greater than 3x minus 4. Would those points be solutions or not part of the solution? You may use Desmos to help. Pause the video now and complete the check. Let's check our answers. So first, you need to realize that because it has this symbol here, that our boundary is actually a dashed line. Then, if we choose our test point, so let's say we test 0, 0, which actually happens to be down here anyway, is that going to be part of the solution? Yes, it would be. If we plug in 0, we end up with 0 is greater than negative 4. Is that true? Yes. So our shaded area should include 0, 0. Now let's decide the rest by just plotting the points and seeing if they're in the shaded area or not. So negative 5, negative 3. That would be over there. Is it in the shade? Yes. That's a solution. 0, negative 4. That is on the line. But since the line is dashed, dashed lines do not count as part of the solution, kind of like an open circle. So it cannot be on a dashed line. This is not a solution. 1, 1 is a solution. 2, 2 on the line, not a solution. Negative 3, 4 would be off the graph, but it would be in the shaded area that is a solution. Negative 1, negative 7, again, on the line, not a solution. And 4, 2 is definitely not in the shaded area, not a solution. So all those that were on the line, because it's dashed, again, not solutions. If it had been a solid line, meaning that there was a line underneath, greater than or equal to, then all of those would have counted, but dashed ones do not count.